what we're going to be doing in size and as a number of things, my connection is really to answer a simple question. Where does all the sunlight go? Or more scientifically, how is solar radiation partitioned among reflection, absorption, and the ice and transmission to the ocean? And so what we're doing out here is we're making measurements. We're trying to look at the spatial variability of how the sunlight's reflected, and then also looking at the temporal evolution. And we'll take all this data together and then tie it in with something called the mass balance of the ice cover. And the mass balance is really a simple but important concept. We know that the sea ice cover is thinning, but we don't know how it's thinning. We don't know if it's thinning because it's not growing as much in the winter, or because it's melting more on the surface in summer, or maybe melting more on the bottom, or perhaps some combination of all of those. The mass balance can answer how the ice is thinning. It can, with the, these mass balance measurements, we track how much growth there is and how much melting there is both in the top and the bottom. And one of the primary drivers of that surface melting is sunlight. And so to tie it all together, what we're doing here is we're trying to understand the processes that govern this seasonal ice, this ice that's only around for a year, to see whether or not it's forming later, melting earlier, and what changes are occurring to it. And ultimately, how those changes impact people, people not only in the Arctic, but people throughout the whole world. One of the things that I've been studying over the years is albedo, or more generally, the distribution of solar radiation in the ice ocean system. And here at Barrow, this provides an interesting case because what we have is called first year sea ice. And there's more and more of that as the ice cover retreats. And you get some very interesting things, as you can kind of see, one day the ice is flooded with water and the next day it strains. And I think one of the things that drives my work now is the ice albedo feedback. And that's just a mechanism where when sunlight comes in here in the spring, when this is covered by snow, most of it's reflected. But some of it gets absorbed and that melts the snow, which starts to melt the surface. And it darkens the surface, lowering the albedo so you get more sunlight absorbed. And it lowers the albedo even more. And this is what's called a positive feedback. And these positive feedbacks are really of interest for climate purposes because they're a way that you can take a gentle nudge to the climate system and magnify it into a big shove. And what we're looking at here is to see what's going on in coastal regions so we can tie it into what's going on in the main ice pack, where we've seen over the past 20 to 30 years a major reduction in the aerial extent of sea ice. And one of the things that we believe is that that reduction in sea ice extent is being accelerated by the ice albedo feedback. The spectral radiometer. And on the backpack, there's uh, the electronics for the instrument, which takes light in through a fiber optics probe and then splits it up across the spectrum into different colors. This, partic this particular instrument is good because it can do the entire solar spectrum from around 350 nanometers all the way out to 2,500 nanometers. Now you might wonder why we bother to measure this at all. Well, solar radiation is one of the key parts of the surface heat budget of the Earth. And when you think about it, it's sunlight that keeps the Earth warm ultimately. And so how much of that sunlight comes in is important, and also how much of the sunlight is reflected by the surface is important. And what we're going to do now is go off and measure a quantity called the albedo which is just simply the fraction of the incident sunlight that's reflected by a surface. But first, I have to fire up my computer. While on the back is the electronics is, that does the optical measurements, the computer is the controller that uh, takes care of the computer, stores the takes care of the instrument, stores the data. Now, before starting the measurements, we've got to boot up the system and do some optimization and calibration of the instrument which is a process that just takes a couple minutes to do. And on a nice sunny day like today, it's actually kind of pleasant to stand around while the instrument's calibrating itself. But I've been out here in the cold when it's really gotten old waiting on the machine. We have the instrument all ready to go. It's time to measure an albedo. And again, it's gonna be a simple instrument. We're gonna point this up, rotate it and point it down. But there are a few things you really have to be careful of. And one is you want the instrument to be level. You don't want to be looking directly at the sun or upside down or anything. 
and two, you want to pick a site so that it's undisturbed. I mean, who wants to look at the albedos of our footprints? And then finally, you want to make sure that there's no shadows in the field of view. So you're always aiming your albedo measurements toward the sun to avoid the shadowing. And you try to kind of keep the measurement out on your arm as much as possible and keep other people away from the site. So what you do, is you just kind of stand here again, looking towards the sun to minimize the shadows. And if you look closely, there's a little bubble level here that helps me level the instrument. Once I get it leveled, I push the button. It takes a scan. It makes a little song for me so I know it's done it. And I flip it over. And again, get it nice and level. And that's the measurement. And then when we process the data, what we'll do is take those two numbers, determine the ratio, and that's the albedo. Right. 